Hey everyone, the Vegan Preppers here, and it's time for another couple chat. Vegan Prepper. Vegan Prepper. Alright, that was kind of awesome. I did uh, a first take that was a little bit too manic, and I said, okay, I'm going to dial it back down a little bit. And then we did another take, and then I guess you decided to just turn it right back up. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. But if you don't know who we are, we are Adam and Kathy, the Vegan Preppers, and this is a couple chat. We just sort of like to discuss a certain topic and see if you guys are interested in hearing what we think about things. Yeah. Love if you guys would leave comments uh, about what you think about it as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I guess do you want to like just slide right into our topic or you want to do an update or... Yeah, we'll just get into the topic. Okay, all right, cool. It's not much to update. <laughs> no. <laughs> Working and running. <laughs> yes. Actually, he ran how much this morning? 14. 14 miles this morning he ran. Um, and then you did, like, you, you might have irritated your eye a bit. So if we have to stop so that he can go do some eye drops, we might have to stop. So You see me squinting and crying over here. That's, it's just because I love you guys so much. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Anyways, so our topic for the day is mm -hmm. uh, basically, is our society creating weak people? Yep. It's kind of a Yes, that is the we, topic, yeah. and yep. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Cue the outro. <laughs> right. oh. Yeah, it's something we've been talking about kind of off and on for... I don't know, a while. Kind of a... I, I guess I first thought about it seeing somebody walk across the road not on a crosswalk while looking at their phone in traffic. And I just thought, if this was the wild, that person wouldn't make it. <laughs> Yeah. But we as humans live by certain standards, I guess. We... Some of us do, I well, guess. Some of us do, but... <laughs> I don't know. And yeah, I was thinking like I was telling you I was I was talking yesterday uh to one of my friends and she was discussing or just talk we were kind of starting to talk about this a little bit about the younger generation. Also, I also fully recognize that this is not unique to us. Pretty much every single generation thinks the next generation is like weak and stupid and gonna destroy everything. But I don't, I don't know. I'm wondering if it is a bit different this time. Like, cause we're not just talking about new ideas. We're talking about no. a new way of seeing, relating to the world, attitudes about the world, entitlement, but like, I feel, I, I don't know, but of course I'm, this is my, you know, we're, we're in our, we're pushing 40, he's past 40, I'm close to 40, and so we're beginning to kind of look at the young people coming up and starting to think these things again, like many have before us, but I do wonder if it's just a little different, because, you know, leading back to my friend, she was telling me her stepdaughter is like many people, um, she's like 20 years old, kind of obsessed with, you know, Instagram and the whole social media Kardashian type thing, like lifestyle thing. And, you know, it's this idea that a lot of young people have, I guess, that they kind of want to just be famous, like just for being famous and they want to get money for that. Um, and so she's this this girl is apparently always, you know, complaining she does not have enough money. She wants more money, but then she doesn't like to work <laughs> at a job, you know, and and she actually told my friend, yeah, I think I just wasn't cut out to work. <laughs> And my friend, she's an incredible young, she's just an incredible woman. Um, she's kind of, um, I think she's more your age than my age, but she's just an incredible woman, owns her own business, works really hard every single day, does, you know, it's just kind of incredible. And yeah, she just was like, what do you mean? You are cut out to work. What is, it reminds me of like the, my big fat Greek wedding, that, that scene where it's like, oh, he's vegetarian. He doesn't eat meat. What do you mean you don't eat no meat? It's okay. I'll make lamb. <laughs> you know, like that 
messy. Like, I don't know, but that whole, what do you mean you don't feel like working? Like, I don't know. I, <sighs> anyway. Yeah, I, I, I look back at, at my childhood and uh, I started working when I was 12 because we were pretty poor and you know we had things happen in our lives where we didn't have a lot of money um, so so that I could get my school supplies and my you know backpack and school clothes um, I would do odd jobs around the neighborhood I would do uh, yard work babysitting uh, anything I could get a hold of so I could uh, make a few bucks to take the load off of my mom. Yeah, and I'm not trying to interrupt you, but I just, he started, like, you know, he just said it, but really I feel like I want to say it again, that my husband, this man, this glorious specimen here, he began working when he was 12 years old to pay for his own school clothes and school supplies. So anyway, I just, that's so amazing to me. So anyway, go. And that wasn't, your mom didn't ask you to. That was his decision to do it. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was kind of a necessity. It was like, yeah, we, you know, we just didn't have very much. But, but anyway, sorry, continue. I always interrupt you, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, so kind of growing up with resistance in my life, uh, I feel like it turned me into a person who could get things done I think mm -hmm. it, and I think having that uh, having that struggle early on taught me how to work and taught me the value of working hard um, and I think so much of it right now is that we kind of live and we're, maybe we're getting to the first point in uh, 20 years that um, society is getting harder our life is getting harder uh, we've lived in this time of great prosperity and I don't think kids overall have had to like do that kind of stuff I mean mm -hmm. I'm sure there is some right yeah there are some who are living probably a lot of kids who are in actual poverty yeah living kind of similar to, to what you had to do um, but I think as kind of a general I mean even the most poor of the poor they have smartphones and they have you know like like we're, I feel like, no, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to take over your thought. Maybe continue your thought and then I'll, I'll start on my thing. Um, like they don't have adversity. Yeah. Um, yeah, because things have been pretty good for a while. Our economy has been up. People are making a lot of money. And um, again, I don't say that to negate anybody who is struggling but um, I think a society, society as a whole is doing pretty well in America um, so yeah seeing people come out of that with lives that they basically haven't had to work for anything and now they're coming into society and not doing a very good job yeah I I wonder too if that was like, no, I don't know, I might get in trouble for that. So let me see, let me back up a bit. But I, it's also too where it's like, it feels like people are being created now, weak and entitled, <clears throat> right? Like that that girl, I'm just not cut out to work. I, I mean, what, what are you talking about? I mean, obviously that attitude has existed throughout time. Like there's verses in the Bible warning against um, laziness and not working um, old stories old proverbs so this is not necessarily something new it has existed that, that people will just like there's just that random person who just won't work yeah. who, you know that that deadbeat father or whatever who who won't provide for his family and so his kids and his his wife end up working you know and he I don't know drinks himself to death I, I mean this is something that is something that has happened and certainly mothers too there's mothers that have abandoned their children leaving dads all alone and you know like there's people have existed who haven't worked but it just feels like right now it's so pervasive and with the entitlement is the thing that i see more almost than anything 
work. And I think that that in and of itself is kind of a form of weakness. And I think so much of it is actually being created by technology. It's being created by smartphones. I feel like we are, um, for the first time in the history of our planet, every single person on a certain level can have basically whatever they want whenever they want it. Um, even if you can't physically have a thing, if you've got this device or whatever, you can pull up, you know, anything. Like we were just like talking about it like with Sage, like trying to figure out why is it so difficult to limit her screen time? Because it's a struggle that I have. And I had an epiphany the other day where I realized, oh my gosh, it's because when I was young, there was only certain times that I could watch the shows I wanted to watch. I had after school TV. I had Friday night TGIF, right? I had um, Saturday morning cartoons. That was it. That was the only time that there was anything worth watching, any, you know, to me as a kid on TV. And other than that, I had to figure out what I was doing. But kids now, people in general, um, we have access 24 seven to screens um, where you can, as soon as you're bored with something, you just move right on to the next thing. I want this show, I want it now. <laughs> I want what I want, I want it now. You can order DoorDash to have stuff delivered to you, you don't even have to leave your house. And this is the kind of stuff like to have whatever you desire, food craving wise, entertainment wise, just like show up in front of you. This used to be like only the most rich upper echelon kings, highest nobility of society were the only ones who could experience that kind of life. But now pretty much everybody does. Yep. You see, like, historically speaking, <clears throat> most of those people were entitled jerks, you know? They did horrible things <laughs> because they had this expectation that everything was always supposed to be the way they wanted it when they wanted it. And when it wasn't that way, they'd lash out. And, like, it, it, it just creates a horrible low-level human being and I feel like our entire society is that now yeah you have people that the the moment resistance to their every woman desire happens then it's time for a temper tantrum mm -hmm. um, and then you have a lot of people temper tantruming and then you have riots and destruction and bad things happening right but yeah, it comes down to, yeah, you didn't get what you want because that's life and you don't always get what you want. Right. Sometimes things happen that you don't like, but you adapt and you learn how to deal with them. Yeah. I think one of the most powerful things, because I know sometimes things do happen that are bad, you know, but it's like this, this victim mentality, this blame game where literally everything is somebody else's fault. And like a person who is completely incapable of seeing their own part in an issue. But then even if something does happen, that is 100% not your fault. I think one of the most powerful things I ever heard out of from one of the pastors, like the pastor that visited our church one time, he said in the middle of his sermon, um, it's not your fault, but it is your fight. And I just thought that was so powerful that, you know, it might not be anything that you did that you deserve any of the stuff that you got, like when you were a little kid and you had to start working to pay for your own school clothes or all of the horrific, stupid stuff that I had to go through as a little kid because somebody else made horrible choices. Um, none of that was my fault, but you know what? It is my fight. And if I don't want to perpetuate that in my own children, if you don't want to perpetuate, you know, a cycle of irresponsibility and poverty, you know, to your own kids, like we've got some fighting to do. You know, um, and I feel like that's where people are missing right now. They're like, oh, my life is hard because of all these people. Yeah. And then they just collapse. Now that's the reason they can't do anything. And it's like. <sighs> life is hard because life is hard. Right. <clears throat> it's hard for everybody. Yeah. Even Jesus said, right in this world, you will have trouble. <laughs> but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's just an interesting interesting thought like like I don't know what the point is I, I don't normally like to talk about problems without bringing solutions but this is just something that's been on my mind I'm still trying to piece together um the whys and for me 
it just it does come back over and over again to smartphones because I noticed it in my own life too that I I find myself wanting to click off of something like okay I'm, I'm not paying attention anymore and I'm moving on to the next thing like it's not only young people I think even adults you yeah. know people our age people older were being retrained to be like unfocused unable to stick with anything have that impatience entitlement it's like even still like every now and then I want to order something on Amazon and I'm like what do you mean it's not going to be here for two days and like two days used to be a miracle and now I'm like what <laughs> I ordered a knife when I was maybe 12 or 13 um, with my birthday money and it was from this mail order catalog called US Cavalry um, which I think might still be around um, but it was like the bomb when I was a kid they had military stuff and um, <laughs> I used to stare at that catalog but they had this this silly knife that had a flashlight built on and it was so hokey and dumb and a little little drawer with a fishing kit and it's like this whole survival thing it was a piece of junk but um, <laughs> but to a 12 year old kid it was the epitome of cool pop-up telescope rad <laughs> um, but the way you bought it was you sent a check with the uh, the order form and then it would go off and then you would forget that you had ordered a thing because it took so long to get six to eight weeks six to eight yeah, weeks I remember that so seven weeks later I get a package in the mail and it's this thing I completely forgot I was getting um, it was like Oh my gosh, my thing is here. Uh, yeah, now to think like, oh, it's gonna take three days. Oh, Let me I see if I can find it. it somewhere that I can get it to me faster. <laughs> yeah. Fine, oh I'll pay gosh. the extra three dollars for faster shipping. Oh my gosh, it's so true. So yeah, it's like I, I have to always like I don't mean to. There's another thing I, I've seen. It. I I'm so lame. I'm full of all these lame things, but like to not always be going like this, like, oh, this is the problem, this is the problem, to always be willing to turn that right back on myself and say, okay, now, where do I see it in my life? And it's just, I guess yeah. it's maybe, and maybe that's really the point is not to just complain about it, but yeah, really, I, I also, like, I, I stop and I reflect in myself, like, like, where am I now? More entitled, more impatient. Although, I don't know, impatience for sure. But I gotta say, I, I would say, but no, you correct me if I'm wrong. Go ahead and do it. He will. He will. Um, that's one of the things I love the most about you is your extreme honesty and your lack of fear. <laughs> like, I just love that so much. Like you just, just don't even get, you will say what is true or not. But I don't think, I don't think I have entitlement. Maybe, so. maybe I'm old enough that I've got, I got past, I didn't get that part, but I, I do definitely have impatience, but yeah, it's, it's a combination of impatience and entitlement. It's the whole younger generation right now, I think. Yeah, I, I definitely have the impatience, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't, I don't feel entitled to anything. Right. Um, I just think it's the farther too we get removed, right, from the natural world. Like we were just talking about this this morning with the lychees, like. It's, leech, it's the tail end of lychee season, apparently. It's like a glorious month of the year that we get lychees. Yep. Next year, you're not going to be able to find them now, but next year, around June-ish, find yourself an Asian market and buy some lychees. <laughs> yeah, if you're lucky enough to have one local, but my Crazy. goodness. Oh, they're so good, and they're so wonderful, and they're such a treat. And we miss out, I think, so much in life on really even like true pleasure, right? the withholding of certain things like to, to not have it all year long and then when it's there oh it's the best ever it's such a treat to have that thing and we don't have seasonal produce anymore we don't have at least living in the city currently like we do we don't have the experience of seasons and the changing like the cycle of the year and I don't know there's just so many wonderful things built into the natural existence that, that I think helps foster better human beings, but not just better human beings. I think like a better life, like it's a better life. But anyway, we miss out on it. So hopefully we can create more of that in our own lives. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, I think so much of, <clears throat> so much of it's just, 
Yeah, I mean, it's just that way with everything. It's like taking a minute to kind of give yourself a, a quick diagnostic. Um, and just, yeah, think, am I, am I the person that I want to be? Right. Uh, when I when I see a negative trait in people or society, say, well, am I part of that in whole or in part? And, um, you know, answer honestly. And yeah. like Kathy and I are, are seeing now that we've got some of those traits. We don't have all of those traits, but, um, mm -hmm. and, and then do something about it. You know, yeah. Make a conscious effort to maybe watch that video all the way through. Uh, <laughs> you know, just little things. When I was a kid, we were all about MTV. <laughs> all about, I mean, I'm still all about music videos to Kathy's chagrin. Music videos, but yeah, not MTV. Oh, MTV's dumb now, but um, when I was a kid, MTV was music videos. And that was it. Yeah. Um, good old days. <laughs> but we would sit and watch MTV for hours, and <laughs> it would be like two songs that we were interested in. Um, See, I never had cable, so I never you know. got any of that. But anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so we had, we'd sit there. I remember just waiting and waiting for that Def Leppard Pour Some Sugar on Me video to come on. And then freaking Cindy Lauper would come on <laughs> and I'm like I swear they just played her <laughs> and then share I'm like no 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 guys <laughs> you have Def Leppard in there <laughs> when are you gonna play it and then finally after like four hours of watching videos I didn't want uh, Def Leppard come come on and I get that three and a half minutes of yeah it was like I don't know it just made it like extra special yeah it was like a, you, you finally made it yeah yeah right. Well, it's like me every year, right, with the Christmas music, and I'm waiting, because as far yeah. as I am concerned, Christmas does not officially start until you hear Christmas Eve in Sarajevo on the radio. And you can't cheat and just listen to it. It's got to come on the radio. I can't. And yeah, it's, it's maybe it's like I'm, I'm hearkening back to those days, but I will not just pull it up on YouTube, because I could. I have to hear it come on the radio, and then it's like, oh! Christmas is here, you know, like, like, so it's just like, I don't know, we have to find ways of putting it back in our lives. But I, I think, yeah, the natural world, natural life is basically built for patience. And yep. We're healthier when we live more like that. So anyway. There's a time for all <coughs> things. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we are good on that topic. And now I have a new segment for the couple chat. And I hope it will be as thrilling for you guys as I think it will be for me. But I don't know. This one is not going to be dramatic, I don't think. So I want to have a new segment called Adam Reacts, where I bring something to Adam and we just get his raw reaction to it. Um, because sometimes it's hilarious. Sometimes it's amazing. I don't think today's going to be hilarious. Um, but I just sometimes, and then I, I always find myself, like I bring him a topic and then I say to myself, or sometimes I say to him, I wish we were just filming right now because that was so beautiful. Um, and so I decided I'm just going to start saving it up and waiting until we are filming and not talk to you until we have the camera in front of our faces. Yeah. <clears throat> so We don't talk unless there's a camera. So. <laughs> we do, but I mean for stuff like this. Because it's like, I, I do, like I find a little nugget. I do, like I save it up. I'm like, oh. <gasps> I can't wait to see what Adam says about this. Like, I won't even text him. I won't say, I, because I want to be face to face when I tell him, because I want to see the reaction. Um, but this one was, um, it's just interesting. I was reading it lately. <clears throat> and it's another, I mean, man, it might harken back to our, our first topic there. Um, it, it seems like it's a trend now. I roll. Anyway, you're not getting my reaction, you're getting his. Um, and I read a react, uh, a phrase on this like semi-celebrity couple thing where they have some podcasts talking about how to love and how to be in relationships. And then sure enough, one of the topics or something that they talk about in one of the episodes, there was a phrase, and I just want your reaction to this. The phrase was <laughs> evolving out of monogamy.
Wow. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. I mean, for, for one, it's like super sad that people have this idea that, uh, that loving and being with one person for your whole life is outdated and archaic and it's, primitive yeah so like the exact opposite actually uh, <laughs> sorry continue I'm sorry. Uh, that's <clears throat> very sad to me um yeah. i look at how kathy and i have grown together over nearly 20 years and how we we still learn about each other we still grow together and she still delights me every day. Um, and to think of just giving in to like, I don't know, baser instincts to like, just say that this isn't valuable. I still hang out with you. We'll still fool around, but you know, I'm evolved. <laughs> I'm gonna go bank some other checks. Because <laughs> I'm sophisticated. Um, <laughs> also, if you want to get straight down to evolution, um, <clears throat> evolution is all about things getting better, improving turning into something that is more advanced than the thing before. <laughs> Evolving out of monogamy is actually really not evolution, it's a mutation. <clears throat> and mutations are always negative. It's not like X-Men where <laughs> you can shoot laser beams out of your eyes, but maybe that's what's going on with my eye. Maybe I'm Oh, well, I'd be shooting beam. some laser beams out of my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, trying to do something like that. <laughs> but evolving, at, it's mutating out of monogamy to a to a negative trait that's actually destructive and leads to harm and leads to uh, a reduction of the quality of your life. Where whereas a say like a child is born with a mutation, it's not a beneficial trait. Um, it's always something that affects them negatively in life and i feel like that's really what evolving out of monogamy is it's mutating to something that's a negative and because this is important i know that the world is trying to say right now that this is not important but when you have a man and a woman who love each other and are linked together in a a commitment of love forever that is a powerful force that affects the world positively well it's stability yeah it's bedrock it's the bedrock that society is built on it's the family unit yeah which starts with that committed couple in the center you know <clears throat> but yeah, I, I thought that was so funny when I read that too, and I was like, and I yeah, I thought that was because they're they're trying to dress it up like it's an advancement, and I just think again of like seeking to become wise, they have become fools. Like that's I. It does fit with our previous t topic, though. Right. Yeah. It's like because people can't even make a commitment and then stick to it. Yeah. Oh, I don't feel good about my marriage this day, so I'm I'm gonna go off and do something else. Yeah, like I'm gonna quit and not even try. I wasn't cut I, out for monogamy. Yeah, yeah. I I feel sad, so I'm gonna run off. I mean, obviously, if there's abuse or anything like that going on in a marriage, then absolutely people should not be around that. But run like, far away and run fast. Yeah, yeah, but, for sure. But like, yeah, relationships are work. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you have to choose to put the work in because everybody's cut out for work. 
Yeah, and it's I don't know, it's that 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 idea and I think it's sinister because it is it's a sinister like a little poke where it's like if you are choosing or if what you seek or desire is a committed monogamous relationship, then you are more primitive than me who has evolved out of such things. But yeah, I, I think it's like it's the exact opposite. Primitive tribal like ancient times you know across the board were like polygamous pretty much and you had multiple partners and i guess some of that had to do with um like it was men in power <clears throat> you know had a lot of wives or whatever um but there are like random small pockets where there's actually places where it was like fully just kind of open relationship Cultures, those are few and far between, but um, it's just crazy, crazy to me that that we're considering that to be something that's evolved. And I don't know, yeah, like maybe, maybe again, and then I don't think it's the ideal. I think even looking at the Bible, even though people in the Bible had more than one wife. Um, that would have worked out really well. Right, exactly. <laughs> but you see, you see, the drama is there. They do not hide that there was drama. I don't think anybody reads those stories and comes away with the idea that this is a good idea. You know? I'm gonna get me two more wives. That worked out great. Because the drama, I can't wait for the drama. <laughs> so great. Um, but like, I, for me though, too, like you, you look at that. There is verse. There is a verse. I think somewhere in the Old Testament, one of the laws it says, um, "Your kings shall not multiply wives for themselves." There's actually a like a statement where God is like, "Don't do it," um, because it, it leads to to ruin and just all of that. But <clears throat> you know, Solomon did not listen. Of course, um, a lot of other guys did not listen to that. Um, but I think you see, though, if, if you're just looking biblically speaking, and you see the ideal, God presents us the ideal at the beginning, where it's Adam and Eve. Yep. Not Adam and Eve and Jessica and Diana and, you know, like he didn't create a million wives for Adam. He created just one, you know, because that's yep. the relationship. But I don't know. It's just interesting. So I guess maybe somebody would say, oh, that that's primitive or maybe it's based off of our religion. But I think that that's, isn't that most though? Can you think of a single great love story even from ancient times where the story was about like multiple people i mean i can't think of any i mean there might be some but there is definitely there is a woman how that works out there's a woman who had five husbands in hindu mythology that's actually a really interesting story um and um going through it but even in that there's a and it's in one of their scriptures and i'm sorry i don't remember the name of the scriptures but there's a verse where one of them it's after one of them dies i think that was like her favorite uh, she preferred him above all others so even in that there's like the one relationship that was more than the others and yeah you see favoritism and all that you know so it's like i don't know it's just interesting to see but yeah all the great stories are one man, one woman, you know, and it's the love between the two. Yep. Because that's what I think everybody desires, and that's what they want. That's what they dream of. I think. Yeah, and maybe there's this. Yeah, maybe they're trying to fill a void that they're lacking. Mm -hmm. With you know, basically with a counterfeit, mm -hmm. like, well. I'm not getting everything I need from one person, so maybe if I have multiple people, then I'll get what I need. Um, it's not yeah. going to work, but yeah, pretty much you're going to end up without what you need because nobody's going to be willing to give it to you. Or nobody can give it to you. Yeah, yeah. There's there's the void inside that can only be filled with God. <clears throat> this is what I believe, of course. Like the word says, He has he's put eternity into our hearts you know what does that mean i think it, it means that so many things I've, I've pondered that verse for so long and i still don't think i'm done pondering it but there's there's something inside of us i think ultimately that just knows there's a part of us that knows 
things are supposed to be a certain way. Things are supposed to be good. They're supposed to be happy. That's why it's so painful when it's not, is because we have something inside of us that knows this is not the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, because he's put, eternity, he's put eternity into our hearts. He's written, I think, his ideals into our hearts. And so we know. I don't know. But yeah, this is, it's work, but it's also really good work. Yep. You know? And it's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> I can't imagine being with anyone else too. That's the other thing that doesn't even compute for me, personally. Um, that whole, that idea that you might go out with someone else or like, I, I guess I should say, I, I would go out with somebody else and end up in bed with someone else. Yeah. I'm like, ew. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that seems very, very strange to me as well. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys have watched the channel, you know we're, we're, we're coming from a, a certain direction. Um, you know, we are Christian, but I, I feel like even outside of that, sexuality is, is like such a deep form of intimacy that doing it correctly, you can't share that with somebody else. Right. Because it's like a, it's like a, a next level connection and within this within this relationship it's like this amazing boost you know extra special thing but just like thrown around i don't know it it, it doesn't yeah it seems tainted and not i don't know not valuable not special not precious it's a thing that 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 enhances and grows over time mm -hmm. Right. It's like we're, we're culturing together over time, creating something that is only us. It's only ours. Right. And you can't, you can't have that with somebody else. You, mm. You're like, people are giving up potentially on the best and most amazing, rich, valuable experience that they could ever possibly have seeking like excitement in the moment like going after that dopamine hit um and it just leaves them and yeah i agree with you it's kind of sad it, it leaves them with no ability to experience what it is like to be two people who have become one flesh like the bible says where it's like yeah there's a deep intimacy between us that isn't even only about <clears throat> that but or you know the 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 bedroom stuff um but it's definitely it's like something that it's like a beautiful golden thread that just kind of goes through our whole relationship and if we were to be off with other people like you can't have that you can't have that kind of safety and that kind of trust and that kind of just that depth of beauty with other people in the mix it's just us, <laughs> you know, like, and like, I'm, I'm so happy with that. Yep. But yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I just, just saw that and I was just wanting to get your thoughts because I thought, gosh, I just, again, I feel sad. Like even, um, Will Smith, I think, um, he was saying, and I, I don't, I don't like to participate in gossip. This is, I'm not trying to gossip about, um, Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith and, they're kind of very famously open relationship now. Everybody knows about it, but he was quoted, and I'm quoting him in a magazine. <clears throat> he said that, you know, allowing basically your, your partner to experience whatever, go out and do stuff, that he said something like, it's the most selfless form of love. I think is what he said, exactly. The most selfless form of love is basically like, so that he's saying that, him being with his wife and her, and I think both of them at this point have participated in, you know, the more open relationship style that 
the two of them allowing each other to do that is like the most selfless form of love and being together. And I, I just, I don't know. I just so disagree. I don't think it's selfless. I think it's just selfishness, pure selfishness on the per part of the person. And again, I'm not specifically judging them. I, I'm saying for my, now I'm, I'm starting to talk and I'm not calling them selfish. They have their own thing going on. They can do their own thing. I'm just talking like for my part, looking at the idea, it's, I, I feel like it is just pure selfishness. Like if you said to me, I just need more, I, I need to go off and, and be with, you know, experience that with some other woman, like that's, it's like you want me to sanction adultery basically is, is what it is. It's like we're, we're sanctioning adultery now in our relationship and. Or yeah, or if I came to you and I was like, it's just not enough for me. I'm going to go off and be with this guy I met. Like. Yeah, immediately the intimacy is destroyed. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, anyway, it's self selfish on yep. the part of the person. It's the ultimate entitlement, maybe even impatience, right? You're impatient because you can't wait <laughs> for stuff to get good again. Because it hasn't always been, you know sunshine and roses and rainbows and unicorns for us you know we've been through our own hard times and yeah. you know but we learn and we grow i don't know yeah it's just interesting it's interesting yep <sighs> i think though that i have seen um the most selfless form of love though and when I think about selfless love, and that's what I thought when I, when I read that, and I just, I felt so sad, and I was like, you are incorrect, sir, because I feel like the most selfless form of love I've ever seen, and I don't know if I should get too personal, but it was um, when I, um, when I had the miscarriage, and the way that you took care of me through that. And I'm sorry I'm bringing this up. I guess I could cut it off. If you want me to cut it off later, I'll cut it off. But, um, the, yeah, the way that you cared for me during that, like, I mean, it was horrible. I don't need to get into the details. I mean, it was horrible emotionally and it was horrible physically. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't talk about is how horrible physically that experience is. Um, how painful and how much there is to deal with. Um, and that's all I'll say, but you just cleaned up after me, you took care of everything, you went and got food, you went to the store, you went to, yeah, just all the things that you did, holding me at night, crying, and you had your own pain, but you just, the way that you loved me through that, I would say something like that is the most selfless form of love because yeah you had your own pain but you were totally focused on me and I guess in that in those moments I was kind of totally focused on myself yeah but you had to be yeah it was a tough time yeah it was a very tough time but yeah anyway <sighs> this is the most evolved relationship <laughs> right here Oh my gosh. Oh, people. Yes. Ah. Oh. People just don't know. Yep. You got to put the work in and reap the reward. Yep. Yeah. That's good. All right, cool. I guess we'll cut it off. It got really long. Yep. It got too long, I think, for our zombie apocalypse question. That'd be we'll a separate video. We'll put that in the next video. <laughs> Who's on our team for the zombie apocalypse? Anyway. Okay. I guess that's it. So as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. See you guys later. Bye. Okay, bonus little couple chat segment. Um, the question is not including family. <clears throat> who are the three people you want on your zombie apocalypse survival team? And maybe I guess those people might help you protect your family or whatever, but this is not including family because obviously you'd be on my team. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, who are your three for your survival team? 
Uh, number no, one. Number one is Jocko Willink. <laughs> That's my number one too. <laughs> He's super tough, super dedicated, knows how to blow stuff up. Yeah. Knows how to fight, survival, the whole, whole yeah. kit and caboodle. Somebody that I believe I could depend on. Yeah. <laughs> um, the second one will be controversial, but I'm going to say Bear Grylls. Oh, because I didn't think about him. He also has military experience, knows uh, a lot about survival, mm -hmm. and is super positive, which I think is important. You also feel like you could rely on him too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. And then my final is I actually don't know his last name, but Simon, a bloke in the woods. Oh, funny. <laughs> yeah. Because Simon is also super positive, and knows a ton about surviving. Out in the woods. I did not even think about positivity, honestly, yeah. on this list. <clears throat> I, I was like, the zombie apocalypse did not scream positivity <clears throat> to me. Well, I just think that, <laughs> and Bear Grylls actually talked about this a lot, is like, when you're in a bad situation, keeping that positive mindset is super important. Yeah. Or else, why, how are you going to keep going? You're so sweet, yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, for me, my number one is Jocko Willink. Yeah. as well this and that was actually that's the number one too from the other one i was i was talking about um but yeah jocko willink um yeah experience there's just i feel like he could take charge he would yep. just sort of know what to do he's got all kinds of stuff but yeah you can count on him and i i would think that he's he's just seems he strikes me as a very decent very honorable good person i feel like he's the kind of person who would be in charge but then yeah like he, he makes a huge deal out of listening to people around him i i don't feel like that's the kind of man that would lead you over a cliff no nope. for stupidity's sake you know or, or be too prideful to listen if you're like no wait what about this or you know anyway so yeah jocko willink definitely fight combat experience and um all of that my number two though for like pure zombie survival bad bleepery would be somewhat appropriately <laughs> with the bleeping <laughs> Mr. David Goggins oh, I forgot about Goggins <laughs> definitely not positive well, oh, he's, you know, he's yeah, positive he in a different way yeah he's intense but he's positive he, yeah he's good but he's you know he's encouraging but like with a lot of cussing. So I'm gonna have to switch Simon out. Sorry, Simon. Oh really? I forgot about oh, Goggins. Oh funny, David Goggins. How do you forget about Goggins? But um yeah, just for the pure the pure <laughs> toughness factor, the pure like I don't know, like he I feel like he yeah, he'd just be like he's like the secret I don't know, like the bomb or like you'd throw him some he's like a grenade. He's a human grenade or whatever. He's just amazing, of course. My reservation on him, but that I can't tell, I don't know. I, I feel almost like at some point, I don't know if he'd get fed up and run off and do his own thing. I don't think he would, but I you think he would crush us into the ground. I think he would push everyone so hard yeah. that the things might fall apart. Yeah, I, I feel intense. like he would be, and I don't know, so then yeah, maybe it wouldn't be that he would leave. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to like, Im impinge upon his character like he would leave um but yeah i i feel in my heart or in my head thinking through that list that he's kind of temporary I, I don't feel like he would be sticking around for a really long time for whatever reason although maybe he would you know but it's just yeah maybe it's more like what you said that he just run everyone into the ground so much that it would eventually be like come on dude you can't you just can't yeah. Um, he gets the best out of people for sure, but people have limits. But yeah, but as far as those initial days of survival, you need someone screaming at you to keep going and keep, you know, yeah. so I need, I was like Goggins for sure. <laughs> My third one is the one I'm debating on. I think though for me, and it's funny, I know there's Simon is out there and I like Simon, <clears throat> but the one that I went with, because I had my two, um, and the one ultimately I chose, I think, is Dan Wolwack of Coalcracker Bushcraft. Oh, yeah. Because he is not just well-versed in survival skills. He is also super well-versed, it seems, in primitive survival skills. Yeah. Where I feel like if that man was in the woods with nothing, he would still 
figure it out. And even though Simon is really good, I don't know if he's at that level. He might not be. He, you know, I don't know that he could start a fire with nothing but sticks and like cordage that he makes himself off of a tree <laughs> somewhere, you know, like to make a bow and drill fire thing. You know what I mean? Like Dan Woolwack is like a whole other level. Um, my other guy I was debating was Asbjorn Olsenberg. I hope I've said his name correctly. It's another bushcraft crafting channel that we're obsessed with. But him, I, I ultimately chose not to because it's like, I don't know that he's necessarily super mega ultra survival guy or if it's like he's very good at bushcraft yeah but that's about all we know so yeah it's like he could build us a cabin <laughs> or whatever but like i don't know so yeah I, I went with dan Wolwack. so yeah that's my final list jocko Willink, david goggins and dan Wolwack. that's pretty solid yeah i i think i think i still would leave goggins out but i might switch out simon with dan Wolwack. oh okay <clears throat> Yeah, I I think you I'm a stick. Simon. I'm, yeah, Simon's so awesome. Um, but yeah, I think I agree that yeah, for the more having nothing and doing something with it, that would be pretty solid. Yeah, I would I would still keep Bear Grylls so. though. He's pretty great. Yeah, I I completely forgot about him honestly. But yeah, okay, cool. That's our zombie apocalypse list. Who's on our team? All right. <laughs>